In this video, I'm investigating this component, a capacitor, in parallel with this component, a resistor, and seeing what happens when you allow them to discharge. My theory is that the time constant is a product of R and C multiplied together, and I've built this circuit to investigate them. I have a push button, which attaches the capacitor and resistor combination to 8 volts, and a voltmeter to see what happens. This is my voltmeter. At the moment, I'm using 100 kiloohms and 100 microfarads as my two values. And let's see what happens when we press the button. So I press the button and I go. And what you can see fairly clearly is that the voltage started off at 8 volts and it's going down as the capacitor discharges. And it's going down in such a way that it's not a straight line. While we're watching that, let's just see how I get my time constant. So I do 100 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 100 times 10 to the minus 6 and I press equals, I get 10 seconds. I'm going to stop this when it gets to 30 seconds, which is three time constants. There we go. Now, what we can see is that if I move the tracking tool along to the 10 second point, at 10 seconds we were down to about just under 3 volts. So the time constant, this value here, tells us the time it takes for the circuit to decay to around about one sort of third of its starting voltage. Now, we're going to do some more of that later. If I change the values of R and C, the time constants would change. But I'm going to change them in such a way that they still have the same time constant. So I'm going to take out my 100 microfarad capacitor and replace it with a 220 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to take out my 100K resistor and replace it with a 47K resistor. like so, and I'm going to work out the new time constant. So now I have that R equals 47 kilo ohms and C equals 220 microfarads. So now my time constant should be 47 times 10 to the 3 times 220 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 10.3 seconds. So even though I've changed both of the component values, my graph should actually do pretty well the same thing. Let's have a look. Charge them both up and press play. And I've left the original graph there. My new line is following it almost exactly. As we get down to the 30 second mark, there might be a bit of divergence because they're not quite the same values, are they? But we'll just leave that to run down to 30 seconds. That's actually quite impressive. And we'll stop it when it gets there. So my graph looks like this. It starts off touching the axes, and it curves its way down towards the axes like that. So let's have a look at some, imp some interesting points. We started off at 8 volts. How long does it take to get halfway down? How long does it take to get to 4 volts? Well, for that, we need a new piece of theory. And my new piece of theory is, put that one away, this. That the time for a voltage to halve is T a half 0.7 times RC. So if I used my previous circuit, which had a time constant of 10.3 seconds, and I do this is not easy and I do 0.7 times 10.3, I get 7.2 seconds so let's see if that was actually the case use my tracking tool just here to go back up the graph make the voltage come to 4 volts and there we go 7.2 seconds. It works fantastically well. So that is the time that it took to go from 8 volts down to 4 volts. Well, how about if we went a bit further? How about 4 volts down to 2 volts? That's halving as well. Well, that would be two time constants. So that should give us 14.4 seconds. Let's go and have a look. We're going to take this voltage down to 2 volts. And 
and 14.8, pretty close. So you can see that the time for a circuit made of a capacitor and a resistor to go from full voltage to half voltage is 0.7 RC, and that's why that equation often appears in the monostable equations for a NAND gate monostable, for instance. So, so far what we've seen is that the time that it takes to get to half its value is 0.7 RC, and we've seen that if R times C is the same, the graphs look the same. But what happens if R times C is not the same? Let's consider this example. So we'll leave the 47 ohm resistor there, but we'll put the 100 microfarad capacitor back in. And what that means is that my time constant is now shorter. It was 10 seconds. It's now 4.7 seconds. What should the graph look like? Well, let's have a look. Charge it up and go. And what you can see is it starts from the same voltage, starts from 8 volts, but it falls away very much faster. So a short time constant means that your capacitor-resistor combination is going to discharge quickly. And if we do exactly the same, if we stop that, Without doing the calculation, if we take out both of these and we put in our biggest values, if we put in our 100 kilo ohm resistor and we put in our 220 microfarad capacitor and we do a little bit of mental maths, what we should find is that the time constant now for this pair is 22 seconds. So let's have a look and see what its graph looks like. And you can see now that compared to the original run, this one here is my original first run, which was the 100 microfarads and 100K. This one's taking longer to discharge. So a longer time constant means that you discharge more slowly. What we really need to do is add those to our graph. So if my time constant is small, that's a really rubbish curve. I can do better than that. Not much better. You, you get it discharging more quickly. And if my time constant is long, you get something like that. And there we go.